We are the Parlor Mob. Our album is called And You Are a Crow. We're a band. I mean, we're a true band. We all work together on songs and we all collaborate and have ideas and you know the extent like Mark focuses on his lyrics and he writes the lyrics for his stuff but when it comes down to the musicianship and being in the band that's like our number one thing that we, we pride ourselves on and, you know is being in a band we can do that we know we can do that stuff and we still love to do that stuff and we will continue to but also you know it's yeah like I think Nick said it's a vehicle to write a better song and be able to put on a great show People have watch it and have fun. That's definitely get to see us explode. It's very important to us as being a live band too. You know what I mean? Because we we can like uh, being in the studio is great and it's tons of fun and making and we want to make tons of records. You know what I mean? But we definitely consider ourselves first and foremost a, a live band. You know what I mean? Like we plan on touring a lot more. We've toured already. We're trying to do as much as we possibly can. You know what I mean? Because that's where, I mean, that's where we have the, the most fun. Collaborate and have ideas. It's difficult. It was it was easier working with Shakir, uh, Shakir King, who produced the record, because um, I think it was easier than we might have expected it to be, or than previous experiences recording had been. Essentially recorded the uh, and you were a crow live. Like we we uh. You know, we added stuff afterwards, but like what you hear is the guitars, the bass, the drums, all recorded live at the same time in the same room, you know what I mean? And uh, afterwards we worked on kind of, you know, making it more of a record. Yeah, more of a record. We all talked about I wanted to leave that open to interpretation of the people who buy the record. Because I don't I don't think any of us really want to spoil spoil leave it up to the imagination of whoever gets it. I mean, pilfer through the lyrics and the music and see what you can do. Yeah. Plus plus by doing that, um, it more people can relate to it because they'll find their own meaning for it. Yeah, isn't it? Instead of just being like, this is what it means and this is what it is, we could get it, you know, we could get of more people to get into it because it's it should be left right open. It's about what someone means. I think that I think that if people can like, listen to the songs, especially like a song like Hard Times, and they they know or they've learned something, they can learn something about the band and like the things that we have to say and, and the way that we really feel about certain things. written blatantly right there in the songs yeah. and it's more serious for me for a listener to listen to a song like Hard Times than for me to, to sit here and talk about it you know because I think you know personally the music will speak you know I'm, I'm a better guitar player than I am at doing interviews you know for us and, and like what we're what we're trying to do um, and and not just for us but for like um, anyone like our age that's out there kind of like doing what they love to do doing what they, love to do. they really enjoy doing even if they're not even if they're like you know don't have anywhere to live because of it or they don't have uh, you know certain things like that um, it's kind of serves that purpose too, at least like t to me, you know what I mean? And I think yeah. that that like, without being like, you know, bring yourself up or some box or whatever. When we were at la the last tour that we were on, it was definitely tied, I would say tied to tears. When we're playing every night, we're playing, you know, three nights in, in four days or whatever, and it's like by the third night or something in a row, it sometimes will reach that place. 
just like, I don't know if we'll ever play like that again. It was just, we went giant waterfall. Yeah. We took like a two mile hike up it, and it was just a, a beautiful day. We were seeing all this scenery, you know, we were just having such a nice day, and we're sitting there eating lunch, and Sam gets a call from our booking agent, and we're like, <laughs> maybe he's called to say uh, we got all blues up. We're like, yeah. <laughs> Sam told us like a week prior that yeah. he was trying to get us on on Lala. During our first conversation with him, so we're like, oh yeah, hmm, funny joke, maybe that'll happen. And right. Sam gets on the phone, he's like, I checked my voicemail. And we were eating these subs, like just. And I knew it right when I saw them. I was like, we got all the We did the waterfall thing. So I don't, we don't, I don't think anyone thought that our day could get any better. And then, and then we could, then we didn't eat lunch because we were like, we threw our sandwiches in the garbage, and walked out of the, the place that we were in, like holy, sh you know, shit. Mind you, <laughs> mind you, mind you. Before that, before that, we spent the last two days driving through. Um, North Montana. Dakota and Montana in winter time, basically. In the we dead of winter, terrible. so finally made we were we were in really bad spirits. Yeah. And then we got to Portland. It was, like, it was the world. coolest little town. Before we started recording, we did uh, five weeks of recording. And we before that we did two weeks of pre-production and uh, we were in pre-production with Jakir, uh, Jakir King, who you know produced the record, and uh, we were in this old, uh, abandoned like dance studio, I guess it was. Dance it used studio. to be a, a, yeah. a Freemason uh, temple, all this stuff, or whatever Masonic temple, and uh, it was completely haunted. Com totally haunted. Totally haunted. Completely like ridiculous things happening. Like the lighters just exploding, and cups flying off tables, and bottles just unscrewing themselves. And, like really weird shit, and we were in there for two weeks, and like we would, you know, leave for the night, go home, go to sleep, uh, come back the next morning, you know, nine o'clock in the morning, and the drum set is just sideways, exactly how it was. And like we had microphones set up on it, Not microphones and everything, just, uh, just, just like just clocks, like, just upside down, you know. What and I mean? then we would go out and like smoke a cigarette, come back, and, and they would be like thirty feet up, you know, we're not reaching it, and it'd be right back again. <laughs> Like really weird shit happening. It was in Asheville, North Carolina, and they kind of told us like, "Oh, the place is haunted." And we're like, yeah. Yeah. You know? It's the happy hobo capital of the United States. Yeah. Yeah. And then I, they said that like, you know, the scariest part was the boiler room. So like one day we like get a flashlight, and I'm like, "Screw it, I'm going down there, face the fear, whatever," you know. And I'm all like freaked out, walking down there, and. Uh, there was a there, there's also right yeah, there's, the right. So there was a lot of like transients and a lot of like interesting street folk going on. <laughs> and um, so we're going. I'm going down the stairs into the boiler room. It's all dark. I have the flashlight. I'm like freaking out, you know, looking around. And from outside, some woman screams. She's like, Joey! <laughs> freaking out. Like, oh, the, we heard all the like, distant like, stuff because we're down in the boiler room. It like, sounded like someone was down there. Yeah, it was like a woman down there killed. screaming. Yeah. It's like the scariest haunted thing down there was. Wasn't, at wasn't all real. A ghost. But all this other stuff. But there was real stuff happening. Yeah. We we were, uh, Mark was upstairs writing some lyrics. There was like multi-level floor, and the four of us were in the room. It's just a big empty <clears throat> warehouse, and we're in there, you know, working on stuff. And uh, there's a we're in say a semicircle like this. There's a bottle of water at the top of the semicircle. We all watched it happening. We were in the middle of playing a song. Just. Top unscrews and flies off the thing. The top was screwed on. It was screwed on. on. It just flies off and rolls Came into off. where we are, and we were all like, we just stopped playing. Well, we gotta get the fuck out of here for a minute. <laughs> Excuse me, friend. We gotta get out of here. Excuse my friend. Excuse my friend. We didn't we didn't buy it so he could be in in the band. Or to get him to be in the band, but we definitely did it to like entice him, and you know. <laughs> we bought it for our yeah, we, bought, we bought the trailer because we knew that we were gonna. We our you know our our ambitions were to start traveling and playing shows outside of our our area. But then it was like, well, we could take this this trailer and we could drive over to the health food store where Mark works <laughs> and pull up when he's like outside taking a cigarette break and be like, hey, you know. Uh, we're gonna. We're trying to hit the road. You try. You want to hit the road with us? You know, we're gonna be in the band. We're gonna be in the band. We're gonna go. We're gonna do some traveling. And it was like. Uh, hey, I don't even think you didn't really care about that, did you? No, it's a funny story too. I remember I was dating this, this my girlfriend at the time, 
Um, then we were at some party and Paul was there. You remember this Paul when she was like, you guys got a van. Don't take, no, don't take Mark away. <laughs> don't take Mark away in the van. <laughs> and they did take me away. <laughs>